while biotechnology is now a scientific reality, acceptance on a social level has been a bit slower. And nowhere has there been more opposition to the manipulation of genes in our food than in Europe. As I found out at the Scientific Open Forum in Munich, Germany, opposition to biotech foods in Europe is impacting the developing world as well. Like many Europeans, most Germans prefer to shop for food every day, believing the fresher, the better. It's a culture that heavily subsidizes small farms and typically opposes corporate agriculture, especially genetically modified crops called GMOs. It's not a attitude about food. I think it's an attitude about government that we try not to trust what they will say. And it's a fear that's grown into a movement. Across Europe, there are 174 GMO-free zones, entire states and provinces where it's illegal to plant a GMO crop, an attitude that has slowed biotech crop development, not just in Europe, but around the world. Each year, as many as a half a million children in developing countries go blind from vitamin deficiency. So using genetic engineering, scientists created a vitamin-fortified rice that would combat this. Yet objections predominantly in Europe have all but halted its production. What we are seeing with transgenic plants in Europe is a witch hunt. It has nothing to do with science, it has nothing to do with logic, it has nothing to do with common sense. Ingo Porticus invented golden rice in 1999. Objections delayed the first field trials until 2004, and to date, the genetically engineered crop remains unavailable. A delay Porticus blames on European attitudes. 99.9% .9 of the European consumer doesn't care for third world problems. They just have the crazy idea they want to eat pure food, which has never been touched by men, despite the fact that all they are eating has been dramatically altered by men. Porticus is one of several European scientists that spent part of their summer on what can best be described as a biotech goodwill tour, using scientific argument to dispel lingering European doubts. Philip Knudit is with the Netherlands Safe Foods Project. I think in the U.S. it's the litigation culture. Eh? People say, OK, I'm willing to eat it, and it better be safe. And if it's not safe, I'll sue the hell out of them. That's a, for European, it's a completely different perspective. When a politician stands up and say, listen, I've looked at the facts, and I can assure you it's safe, then people start worrying and think, why is he telling that? What could be behind that? Making the debate over genetically engineered food less about science and more about social attitudes. It's because trust is something that's very easily lost, but very, very difficult to restore. And with the continent's largest population and strongest economy, in many ways, where Germany goes, so goes Europe. And also, so goes the world. Case in point, genetically modified wheat. While other crops like corn and soybeans all have GMO varieties, Opposition in Europe has killed demand worldwide for similar genetically enhanced varieties of wheat. Europe is our number four export market for all U.S. wheat. It's the number one market for Northern Plains wheat. If we had GMO wheat today, the industry simply would not buy U.S. wheat. So we're, we're looking at losing a, a market to, which is about 2 million tons, about 80 million bushels overnight. And it's such economics that has turned a regional preference into a worldwide prejudice that's often hurting the countries that need it the most. What I find tragic is that this European attitude has spilled over to all developing countries. And you have in India the same attitude as in Germany, or in China even. So the delay of using this technology for seven years costs millions of lives with no justification.